welcome. You are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. You know, we would love to hear from you. So please send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. And today we bring to you yet again, and what a privilege to have Father Joseph Marquis, who is the pastor of Sacred Heart Byzantine Catholic Church in Livonia, Michigan. He is also the founder of the All Saints Shrine at his parish, and you can make a pilgrimage there. And where Father's going to share more, uh, yesterday's show he brought some relics of male saints. Today, he brought relics yeah. of some female saints. And so we're going to really yeah. get to share more about that. And uh, it, we are deeply moved when the yes. saints show up in that way in their relics. I tell you, just something very special takes place as we move in faith. Yesterday, St. Joseph of Nazareth, a robe fragment, uh, St. Uh, Paul the Apostle, uh, a piece of the Holy Shroud. Today, uh, part of the veil fragment of the Holy Mother of God, um, St. Catherine of Egypt, St. Corona, protector from plague, and Saints Perpetua and Felicity uh, are actually, their relics are here with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, God just lands on those relics and, and it's just, we feel so privileged and blessed. We pray that you'll experience the same thing. Uh, Father has a beautiful you know, pamphlet on the All Saints uh, Shrine. And uh, just oh, the pictures is just so vivid there. And there's one of um, Saints Victor and Corona who were martyred in 170 AD. Uh, there's a relic of each one of them. And we're gonna be seeing the relic of Saint Corona. Mm -hmm. But there's a quote up on top of it and it says, we do not worship the relics, but we venerate the relics of the martyrs in order to better adore him mm. whose martyrs they are. That yes. was by St. Jerome 420 and why he's associated with them. I'm sure your father would tell us about that. And I, I want to say to our family out there, you know, maybe you were planning on taking an international pilgrimage, maybe to Rome or to the Holy Land or somewhere. And maybe you can't because of the COVID pandemic and it's limited your travels and everything. Mm -hmm. You could see the beautiful shrines right here in yeah. our own country. And this would be a beautiful shrine for you to go visit allsaintshrine.com, allsaintshrine.org. Mm -hmm. But go, you will be blessed. So stay with us. You're in for a real treat and beyond a real treat, a real encounter with the Lord through his saints. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and today we bring to you again Father Joseph Marquis. He is the pastor of Sacred Heart Byzantine Catholic Church in Livonia, Michigan. He is also the founder of the All Saint Shrine at his parish, and you could visit the website allsaintshrine.com, allsaintshrine.org. Father, it has been so delightful to have you. Now, for our family back home, we want you to tell them a little bit about the history of relics and then also a summary of the All Saint Shrine. Well, the veneration of relics, not the worship you'll notice, the veneration of relics, the way we venerate our loved ones when we go to the grave, maybe offer a prayer. Uh, that goes back to apostolic times, time actually the apostles themselves. For example, Polycarp, uh, who was ordained by John, the beloved disciple, that was his bishop. Uh, he, um, he was venerated at, after his martyrdom, very elderly man at the time. I think he was 84 or something, if my memory serves me correctly. He was martyred in uh, uh, 155 AD, and he was so beloved uh, that uh, his tomb was visited on a regular basis, and they said they treasured the bones of Polycarp more than, uh, let's say, pearls or the finest silver. I'm yeah. using, but yeah. it, I'm paraphrasing, it was probably more eloquent. 
Uh, but that was an important uh, part of ex the expression of their gratitude to God, but also they were sources of inspiration. They were the heroes of their day. And uh, you had, for example, oh, John the Baptist. We actually have a, believe it or not, a piece of bone from one of his feet mm. at the shrine. It's about yay big. And th there's immediacy when you come in contact with these uh, remnants, we realize these are real people. This isn't just something that somebody made up out of a book. Mm -hmm like the pagans, these crazy gods in Mount Olympus, these are real people. Our Lord took on a human nature and by virtue of taking on a material body, sanctified the material world. Now we have a number of um, saints, obviously, we couldn't bring the whole collection of saints. We'd have to get a, a beacons truck to bring them in. But uh, we like to encourage people to look at our website. It's just simply allsaintshrine.org or allsaintshrine.com. It's the same place. It'll get you there. And uh, we do have in the Metro Detroit on Wednesdays between 1 and 4 p.m. holy hours. So anybody mm -hmm. that maybe they're working, they want to stop by, they're going through a difficult time. So we have people coming in 10 minutes sometimes, 15, sometimes 20 minutes. I have people I do walking every week, and they stop in for about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the walk of life. Our hope is in the future to have a renewed awareness for our young people about the men and women, our elder brothers and sisters in the faith. I always feel like it's a family reunion when I go to our church. Mm -hmm. Our elder brothers and sisters in the faith who are true heroes, mm -hmm. who actually and, <laughs> affirm their faith in Christ at the shedding of their own blood. Mm -hmm. So, we we'll run the good race. Well, yeah, right. and, run, and then you have, for example, I was mentioning. Uh, John the Baptist, but we also have the relic of St. Anne, not a big one, well, by our standards mm -hmm. anyway. It's about yai, yai by yai. Mm -hmm. And uh, that particular relic, you think about, the, part of the DNA that we're looking at when we gaze upon this little piece of bone is part of the DNA of the Holy Mother God and the incarnate Son of God. Right. Well, John mm -hmm. the Baptist, same mm -hmm. thing. There's a lineage that's his cousin. Yeah. And you put this all, we have Elizabeth, we have, uh, you know, Zechariah, <clears throat> significant figures in church history. But the fact of the matter is, uh, no matter who they are, these remnants, these relics, simply mean something left over. For those who uh, aren't familiar with the apostolic church, they come from different Christian backgrounds, and because of the tragedy of the Reformation history, there's a lot of misunderstandings. As I mentioned uh, yesterday, uh, when you go to a Hall of Fame, if you're a sports fan, mm -hmm. yeah. you look at, uh, let's say, uh, Babe Ruth's uh, uniform, or as I said yesterday, yeah. his broken baseball. Who wants a broken baseball mm -hmm. bat? Well, if it's if it's his, if you, you want it. it. You yeah, want you it. want yes. it. Mm -hmm. So he said, these are yeah. broken bodies. Well, what's the difference? There's mm -hmm. something in the human psyche that wants to make contact because we're mater material beings with immortal souls. So mm -hmm. we can see beyond a pile of bones to something that transcends it. That's the reason we have cemeteries. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. And the interesting thing for France, you know, we actually have a the tip. You think I'm kidding you? Because I can't believe it myself. We have the tip of <laughs> one of the thorns from the crown of thorns mm. that Saint Leo, uh, uh, King Leo of France, had purchased from the Venetians uh, for his uh, special reliquary, which was uh, 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 Saint Chapelle in Paris. A beautiful. It's, mm. I mean, the, the stained glass here is seen stunning. Mm. It was all meant to be a huge reliquary yeah. for the crown of thorns. He said. I'm a monarch. I can go anywhere in the world I want. What about my people? And he was a third order Franciscan. He always wore a hair shirt under his clothing. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to share his faith with other people. And he said to make it immediate to the people to comprehend, I am purchasing the crown of thorns. So he almost made the country broke, yeah. by the way, mm -hmm. buying all these. Yeah. Most of them are related to the Passion. But they would come to these various cathedrals, and they're, you know, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they would find their faith renewed by coming in contact with the material world that mm -hmm. transcends mm -hmm. the eternal. Yeah. So we always think in Kronos time, when we go to a shrine, whether it's as modest as ours is by that standard, uh, it's like a time out of time. Yeah. Everything's suspended. It's like mm -hmm. Christmas. People feel, you know, all of a sudden they're singing Silent Night, and you feel... I'm in a different dimension yes. here. I mean, there's something transcending yeah. even what I can comprehend with my hard drive. <clears throat> well, when we come in contact with the relics of the saints, or also we have the true cross of Christ brought uh, from Jerusalem to, well, she broke one third of the cross. You know, you think of the cross, it's just the cross bar. There was a permanent stake in the ground. They had a slot and you would drop it into that slot. And then they had the charges on a piece of wood called uh, uh, the titulus, and it was carved in. It wasn't written on a yeah. piece of parchment. Point is this: Constantine and his mother 
decided that they would cut it into thirds that she found, she found it. And there's good documented evidence why she did find it. One third stayed in Jerusalem, one third went to Constantinople, the new imperial capital that her son founded, and one came back with her to Rome mm -hmm. to her palace. That palace is now called uh, Saint, uh, a sec, a sacra, Santa Cruce in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute, it's in Rome. Why would you call right. the place where they house the Holy Cross Santa Cruce in Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. Well, you know what she did? She took all the, the soil from the, uh, the uh, skull place, put it in crates, and shipped <coughs> it back to Rome and had it as a foundation for the Amazing. flooring. Mm -hmm. So that when you walk in, she says, you're walking into mm -hmm. Jerusalem. So you can mm -hmm. see this sense in the human psyche that makes it real. As I said, the pagan gods didn't have that. I mean, it was ridiculous. But they had Christ walked the earth. He truly took on a human body, truly conquered death by death on the cross, Amen. and they have the cross. And for all those in the tombs, he granted life. That's where we have the Easter proclamation. These Christ is risen from the dead by death. He trampled death. And to all those in the tombs, he granted life. And that's the reason our bishop, Bishop uh, Milan Locke, a Jesuit bishop, yeah. uh, came and blessed the areas. You don't bless the, the, yeah. the relics. They're, they're, they're sanctified by the person. But uh, blessing the area, so it's a special place mm. of pilgrimage, even if you only live three blocks away. It's a pl yeah. place we can, I like to call it, time out for word from our sponsor. There you There's go. silence, mm -hmm. that pregnant silence, mm. the thundering silence of God's majesty in that tabernacle, and that cloud of witnesses mm. that circles the entire church. Yes. And what we have in the back, on the west side, in the north uh, northwest uh, corner, we have a relic of the, the veil of the Mother God and a special shrine dedicated to her only and this Tell us is, who we have with us today. This is a very small piece from uh, the veil of the Mother God. And as you can see, Jim and Joy, I have a magnifier because they're, they're so rare. They're, they're mm -hmm. small. You get anything and you, I'd get one thread, I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. But this is part of the veil of the mother of God. It was brought from Bethlehem to Rome by St. Jerome. I have a small rock of St. Jerome. I couldn't bring it because mm -hmm. you do what you can. Mm -hmm. But point How does he get associated with her? Well, he, of course, he, he translated, he translated right. the Vulgate centuries later, and the cave next to the cave where our Lord was born is where he actually did it. Oh, okay. So there's a connection there. So yeah. he was in Jerusalem and he had, so he went to Rome and the Pope wanted this relic and he brought it with him to the Bishop of Rome and then they set up a special shrine uh, mm -hmm. in honor of that. Well, this is part of that fabric that St. Jerome sent. I mean, the, you know, the history, this is our history. This mm -hmm. is our legacy mm -hmm. from our elder brothers and sisters in the faith. Yeah. And the Holy Mother of God, we have a tradition in the East, we call it the Holy Protection on October the 1st. There's the incident where in Constantinople, the city was under attack, and the Holy Mother of God, there was an all night vigil taking place. What do you think about, you know, these women and men praying? Mm -hmm. Probably most of them were women, because they're, they're more contemplative by nature, because they're always receptive, you're talking about receiving the word, yeah. mm -hmm. and then the word became flesh was supposed to be becoming <clears throat> flesh in the church. That's the reason went, the church is symbolized as being feminine. Mm -hmm. So the word became flesh and dwelled in our midst. But the mother of God appeared in this church where they're praying and she extended over symbolically Constantinople, her veil. Mm -hmm. So we call her veil the holy protection. The way I was saying in the last episode, where St. Joseph, the robe is symbolic of his care mm -hmm. as a guardian and protected the holy family, the holy mother, places her maternal veil yeah. above us all. Mm, yes, who else do we have? We also have uh, here, I'm going to go quickly, uh, St. Catherine of Alexandria, a bone fragment. We have a larger one, it's about this long, uh, back at the shrine, and she's well known. I'm gonna kind of skip because of time constraints. And here we have uh, the relic, I think it's part of the tibia, because of the size of the bone, of St. Corona. Now, St. Corona is the patron saint since 2003 against the coronavirus. Remember the SARS virus? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That was a coronavirus, came also from a different Chinese lab. This one's from Wuhan. But the point is, ever since then, she was invoked as the patron against the coronavirus. So she's the antidote to corona, mm -hmm. the negative corona. So you have a, a spirit of darkness and here's a spirit of light. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the thing is, you say, well, what, would, what did your life have to do with plague? Though the plague is sin, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, 
uh, her, she was only 15 when she was murdered. Her husband was only maybe 18, 19, something like that. And we, they were kind of shocked by that, but the mother guy was only about 15 mm -hmm. when she said yes to the Holy Spirit and the word became flesh in her womb. Uh, Synchroner and her husband were found out about the Christian faith because one of the uh, other soldiers and her husband, uh, Victor, was a kind of a military uh, person, but he was uh, representing uh, you know, at formal events, it's like if you have the honor guard or yeah. something. So he was never in combat, and he always found ways because he was a Christian, he'd fulfill his duties, but not have to shed blood. Well, one of the men who was envious of him reported him to the magistrate. The magistrate had him arrested, and he was uh, accused of treason yes. and sentenced to execution for his Christian faith. Mm. And so was his wife, 15. She was condemned to death for the same reason. Now. In those days, what they would do, and they live on a, a death march. So in this case, husband and wife would walk side by side. And that's your picture. That's right? that mm -hmm. image that, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. it's here. Go to the uh, death march to the site, but they, they like, you know, it's a lusty kind of butchery. What they wanted to do is make them both suffer as much as possible. It wasn't good enough to, you know, maybe decapitate right. They right. got to really Torment make it. Torment and torture. Them. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, as an example, so they had signs condemned for believing in this carpenter's mm -hmm. son. So she's taking the site. Two brutes are holding her. She's 15. Her, her husband's in front of her, and he's being f f flagellated like, like mm -hmm. our Lord's. Mm -hmm. yeah. Flagellation. Yeah, flagellation was taking place. And that wasn't good enough. So then they bring him down to his knees, and in front of her, they gouge his eyes out. Mm. Lord have mercy. And he's breaking down. I mean, naturally, he's got no eyes. He's, breaking, he's got blood. And his wife forces herself away, you know, can imagine, she breaks mm -hmm. away from these two brutes and falls at his, at his knees, and she said, I'm going to be following you shortly, trust in our Jesus, and they were singing the Psalms, the Psalms mm -hmm. of the depths, I cry to you, Lord, hear my voice, you know, drag her back, and then they forced her to look at him become decapitated. Mm -hmm. Well, that wasn't good enough, of course, they take her out to her own side, and you'll see on the obverse side, I don't know if the cameras can pick it up, Hold it up. You can yeah. see her image, and uh, she's placed this young woman, 15, placed between two young palm trees. The tops of the palm trees are brought to either side of her body, tied to the ground with heavy stakes. So they, they put loops in there, put her wrists through the loops, and you can see what's coming. Mm. And the magistrate ordered the executioners to cut the ropes, and her arms were ripped out of their mm -hmm. sockets. Mm. Now, I, they call it, in my estimation, womaning up. Isaiah manning up. Mm -hmm. She womaned up. Mm. I mean, I'm not sure I'd have the courage to do without the Holy Spirit, of course. Mm -hmm. On a human level, white knuckling being Mr. Macho Man means nothing. But her husband, Victor, and she, <laughs> since it's stirring, I acquired this relic. I was praying to St. Nicholas to get this relic. And two weeks before that, I had this man from Bari, he said, um, uh, I just found a relic of St. Victor, would you like it? Uh, seems like an, it was a ver vertebrae, this big, mm -hmm. the entire vertebrae. Comes in, and I'm reading about, wait a minute, that's the husband of Corona. She comes two weeks later. As if they were not going to be separated. Isn't that something? And, and, mm -hmm. and death, they're brought back, they're mm -hmm. in the same cabinet, side by side. Now, finally, we have here Perpetua and Felicity. There's that famous book, you've probably read it, The Passion of Perpetua. Mm -hmm. She was uh, of a noble caste. Her husband, uh, because he had this wonderful position in her region uh, in Carthage, uh, she, he didn't want to lose it. And so he, the emperor finds out she's a Christian. He comes for a visit, finds out his own governor. She's, she's a what? You know? Yeah. So her husband, or her, pardon me. Uh, Perpetua's father fell to his knees and begged. That's something you never see, by the way. Begged his daughter to re renounce her faith in Christ, to accept the gods, and she wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And her maid servant, Felicity, who was 19, Perpetua was probably, they say, about 21. She was not married, and she was rebuffing all kinds of offer offerings of marriage, and her father thought it was nuts, but she consecrated herself to Christ. You know, mm -hmm. it was in those days. It was like today to have a religious, she'd be like a religious woman, or maybe in a, a secular institute, but she wanted to consecrate herself totally to Christ. So Felicity and she are condemned to death. They go uh, to the arena, and they're waiting in the cells, and this is a couple of days before 
her, their execution. This is all being entered in her journal. I'm talking about Perpetual because she could read and write. So they're praying for poor Felicity because she's going to give birth. She gave birth two days before they're going into the arena. Mm -hmm. So the, the woman from the religious community of Christians took the child as her own as a little boy. And she's the one that completed the journal as Perpetua and Felicity were walking out into arena. The last sight you see is her handing out the journal to the yeah. same woman. And she's the one that completed uh, the entries. And they had a bull that was made rabid. You can imagine, I've yeah. seen dogs with the mm -hmm. little demonic. Mm -hmm. And they, she, the, the uh, bull kept attacking these two young women. Now you can imagine they had the flowering literally of adulthood. And even the crowds, as cold as they were, couldn't bear to watch. They put their thumbs down, and so the emperor ordered that their bodies be dragged with um, Perpetua. First, of course, she was nobility to cut her head off. When they went up to the scaffold, here's Perpetua. This young woman, 21, and this big brute of a guy with a Roman flat sword, she puts it up mm -hmm. to her throat, saying, you're sending me to God, and he cuts her head off and cuts off the head of Felicity. Father, we're going to have to stop at this point. <laughs> we're going to bring you back the to the action, final yeah, segment. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we want the good news with the difficult news. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Don't go away. back. Let's get right to our continuing conversation with Father Joseph. Uh, I know you've got many saints upon your heart and mind. We only got a couple of minutes, but uh, who are you thinking about? Well, saints always keep marching in. Uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, Felicity, I just want to qualify her. There's another saint, Felicity. Uh, often the two Felicities are confused. She was a mother. She had seven children. The oldest one, I think, was like 19. It was like watching candlesticks, you know, in mm -hmm. a descending order. And they're all killed in front of her for the faith one at a time in different ways to extend the agony. So these are extraordinary people uh, that live in, and they're just like us. They had flesh and bone just like you and I. Uh, and of course, we have some modern saints, John Paul II, we have a part of his bloody cassock, Cardinal Jivish. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. he was Monsignor Jivish when the Pope was shot. We've got a part of, uh, of the uh, blood, of, blood of the cassock. But also we have Therese of Lisieux, a little flower, one of my absolute favorite saints of all time. It's a card that was actually designed uh, by uh, her sister Pauline, Mother Agnes, and her sister Celine drew the picture. And you'll see in the upper right-hand corner there's a, a curl or, or her hair. And this was given to benefactors. If you look at the card, it just simply, it's not even, it's not even blessed. It's just simply servant of God. She mm -hmm. wasn't, so that's a historical document, even in terms of her eventual canonization. And so today we uh, venerate uh, the memory of these wonderful women uh, of the early church who would woman up under tremendous persecution. And I invite people, please uh, don't hesitate to give me a call. It's on our website. You can call me directly and we can schedule either days of recollection. You can bring your own priest. I don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, I can give tours. I'm happy to give tours. Uh, whatever would uh, make them happy. Uh, you know, schools, colleges. Mm -hmm. I don't care. We're not, uh, we'll welcome anybody. I'll be more than happy to uh, give them a tour. Once again, it's uh, St. All, pardon All me. Saints. All Saints. Shrine dot org. I got too much on my yeah. mind. All Saints Shrine dot org or dot com. Either one. Father, thank you so much. What a gift you've given to the church, to the Bride of Christ, with all of these relics and our encountering Jesus Christ through their lives. Close us, please, with a blessing. I'm going to place everyone under the protection of the Holy Mother of God. In the Eastern tradition, we venerate her on October 1st, the Feast of the Holy Protection. And uh, through the intercession of the Holy Mother of God, may our Lord's blessing, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon each one of you and remain with you forever under their holy protection of the Holy Theotokos. Amen. 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 Well, you. we're also awed today with the visitation of these saints, these women of faith, and uh, can't help thinking about what Mother Angelica used to say to each one of us. You're all called to be saints. We're called to be a saint. Don't miss the opportunity to become 
the saint. <laughs> God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.